habits are hard to uh, eat, I guess. Um, so we have Jason, myself, Callie, and Ray. I think John will be here momentarily or around 7 o'clock, so we'll move on with that. And so we'll start with public comment, and we have at least one person to speak on the two. Um, so if you want to come on up to the table and bring a chair, roll a chair. Yeah. Okay, so my name is Kristen Rogers. Um, I live over on Conti Court, so Waterbury side. I um, submitted, my letter, submitted my letter of interest for the open school board seat to represent more time. I trust that you guys had gotten the letter of interest. If not, I do have copies of it just to cover the pieces. So um, I want to come tonight just so you could kind of have a face to a name of who I was. I, as you read in my letter, I've been here for 15 years. My son is currently a student over at Moortown. I submitted my letter of interest because I really felt that um, somebody who's been in the community for a significant amount of time, who has a child in the school system, I thought that was really important to potentially, um, hopefully, fill that empty seat. And I've been attending all of the school board meetings pretty much since February, as well as community, community engagement committees, so I feel like I'm kind of up to speed on what's been going on. I just felt like it was really important to have another voice for the town and all of, of course, all of everybody within the school district. And because I do have a child that's at, you know, in the school system, I felt that that was important because of all the kind of coming down having to do with the middle school, with that meetings tomorrow, and the other issues that could be coming down the pipeline. I just felt that it was important to have another voice. That's kind of, I just wanted to, you know, sure. that's kind of all. Have you uh, run for that position before? No. When it's been open? Okay. No. Um, you know, I, I did vote for Peter. You know, I thought that he was doing a really good job, so I did vote for him when it was, and then, you know, his letter came out, which we we're all surprised about. But having gone to the meetings, I, you know, you see what goes on there, so. So that's why I came tonight. Oh, well, we certainly appreciate you coming so that everyone knows, and I'm sure, I'm sure we do, but just for the uh, public. Um, the select board has an opportunity to comment to uh, the supervisory union uh, as far as the candidates. So we should be uh, receiving all who has uh, submitted a letter of interest, and then we'll be able to make comments back to the supervisory union to those. Um, and then they will certainly make their, their decisions, but hopefully, you know, they'll take whatever we have to say uh, into consideration. But so I'll, you know, open it up if anyone has any uh, comments or questions for Kristen. Fred? No, that was, uh, I'm glad to see that you've been going to the meetings. That's uh, always uh, pretty important, you know, that you're not just jumping in there. Should you get the position? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things that's very time time consuming. So you're prepared to spend a fair amount of your time on that position? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm already there. You know, I, I, uh, I go pretty much, unless there's some sort of a conflict, I go there um, pretty much whenever there's a school board meeting. I make sure to attend, because I feel like it's, especially with things that have been going on, I felt like that it was really important that if I'm going to um, have an opinion about things, you have to be willing to go and listen, even if you don't agree with things or you get upset with things, you have to be willing to listen. I mean, I, I know in my letter of interest, my work as a nurse at the CBH, so I've come, you know, I, I'm used to dealing with um, sometimes big personalities, especially when you're dealing with um, doctors. You get pushback from people, you know, trying to juggle everything, you know, especially as I said earlier, I work as a relief charge nurse, so I'm in charge of both of our units and having to push back sometimes when it's not in the best of interest of our nurses if they're trying to push to get people onto our unit and trying to advocate for people. So I get it, like, you know, when you come to a school board, there's a lot of, can be a lot of big personalities, a lot of opinions about what one person might feel is the best thing, but you really have to go with a really open mind and be willing to listen to all sides and really figure out what's best for the community and the town and the kids and the public. 
One of the things that I uh, liked about Peter was his communication back to the board. Yeah. Um, so I would hope, and Gabe as well, and since that way, usually they would come in together maybe once a quarter just to kind of update us on what was going on and, and if they needed anything, we were trying to support you guys as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would be willing to 100% do that because I feel that it's important that everybody knows what's going on on the school board end and here. So yeah, 100%. I mean, that's, that's, I think that communication is a big key to making important decisions and making sure that everybody's well informed because miscommunication can really spread like wildfire and that's where hard feelings can sometimes or misinterpretations of what somebody thought they heard just, you know, so. So have you had any uh, feedback from the supervisory union yet? So just uh, Bridget sent me an email last week saying that she received it, um, that thanked me for stepping up to volunteer, that she thanked me for my volunteer work that I do, and that um, just from Christine as well, just saying to, you know, are you available to come on September 19th? Okay, so um, scheduling, I guess that's where I was going. They have yeah, so they, yeah, September 19th is, you know, and then just Maureen that um, she saw that my letter had come through. Because I sent it to not only um, the chair and the uh, superintendent, but the entire school board as well, just so that they... Uh, opportunity to look at, sure. Yeah. I think that's probably a good idea. Well, um, you know, certainly I wish you, you luck there. Thanks. As well. I have a couple of questions, sure. one of which you started to address, but I may as well just ask the question straight out, um, which is how do you plan on dealing with the issues that led to Peter's resignation? So I think what I kind of saw over the progress since I had my meetings in February is I felt, um, I, my personal feeling is that um, you need to speak your voice, even if it's not um, a popular, uh, what you want to say isn't popular and what goes against maybe the majority of what is said. So I, I do feel like um, some people um, aren't willing to be honest and kind of sometimes go along with the status quo of the school board. I mean, I'm really, I mean, your job on the school board is to um, to make the best decisions for your town or the kids or the whole the whole district uh, of every town. And you you need to say what you want to say. You might not be the most popular person, but you have to be honest with how you feel um, and try not to take it too personal if you butt heads. Does that kind of it does okay. It does. Um, and the second question was, what would your approach be to controlling costs? That I'm not, I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure because I'm, you know, I guess I would have to, I'm not, I don't have a lot of experience in that mm -hmm. area. Um, I guess it's just to be really well informed, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's to, to be really well informed, I, I guess that's, I'm not sure. I'm, like I said, I don't have I don't have experience with things like that. That's where I do lack of in experience. But I would try to ask the questions that need to be asked. Like for I'll just give you an example. This whole solar deal thing that the school board voted on. Um, you know, I really felt like we kind of as not we personally, but as a school board, you kind of held all the cards in a way, and felt like maybe I know that they didn't vote on it till they came back in August, but maybe could have uh, worked potentially a better deal by asking better questions or, you know, so, I don't know, th things like, you know, just trying to get more information, be better informed, and really not make the split-second decisions that I sometimes feel that the board needs to take more time on. That's the other thing, issue that I feel the board has. I feel like they're not taking enough time on important subjects to vote on, and I feel like they vote on them when they need a little bit more time to really think about it investigate, do research. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yes. Good answer. Anything else, Jason? Mm -hmm. Kelly, how about you done? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Great. Well, again, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, and we will certainly, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come in. Well, oh, thanks yourself. for listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.
You don't have to run. You can stay for the whole thing. Oh, thanks. My husband's out of town, so I'll see you and all that stuff. Have a great evening. Have a great evening. All right. So seeing no other public comments, unless anyone around the table has any public comments. No. Mm -hmm. Moving ahead. Uh, Katrina? Would you I, like to do reports and communications? Yeah. I have one thing. You'll see it in your um, signature sheets. I just printed it so it doesn't have a little tab on it to sign. But um, we got another $5,000 towards Lynch Hill from CDRCP today. OK, I did see that when we had it. It was a, a addendum to the contract. That yep. We had to do. So. yep, so it was Cheryl turned in all the paperwork because it's done. And he said, I see you did another section above what I pointed out. Well, I can add it on. And, it and that was Lynch Hill again? Yep. Oh, nice. And we also were able to get more money for uh, Lover's Lane, is that correct? Yes. Yes, both of them. Oh, and also one other thing was I just turned in another grant for hopefully windows at the town hall, since the new one is beautiful and works. <laughs> we just did seven, so there's eight main ones on the front and the sides, the big, big ones. So I just turned that grand and we should hear back about that by the end before the end of the year. Nice. That's it. So the windows were getting I think this came up before. Something about the historic preservation. Mm -hmm. They're historically correct windows. Okay. And they rebuild right. the cells so it's not like a Okay. I mean yes, they're plastic and energy efficient, but they're correct in every way okay. look wise. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rachel? I do not have anything. Kelly? Yes. All right. <laughs> so I went to the class four pro presentation last Monday night. So we got to look at some of the work on Lynch Hill, mm -hmm. which is awesome. They've dug all the way up to the first camp. You can basically drive a car up there now. And they talked about all the different ways that you can all the different things that you can do to the road to make changes to reduce the phosphorus coming down or slow the water down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it may not take as much as you think it does. But so who put that presentation on? Was there any CBRCP? And they have, must have had a, someone technical there giving all this advice or was there an engineer or something? It was the guy from it's DMS. I can't tell you what that stands for. <laughs> yeah. It was better road, what is it, right? Better yeah. road practices yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. is the standard they went by. Yes. Better yeah. 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 No, not better practices. No. Was this a well, well attended? No. Okay. <laughs> and there was, what, 10 people there? Yeah, he said he expected 10 to 15. Mm -hmm. It's not bad for no. mm -hmm. A couple people from different towns came that mm -hmm. didn't take advantage of the grant money, that wanted to see how we used it. And we're pretty impressed. They also said that uh, the hill was like the Cadillac of fixes of anything they have seen. I've heard it. It's really nice. It's amazing. Oh, okay. yeah. It's beautiful. Dan was supposed to send me after picture or before pictures. I actually have some after pictures, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. So is there like a couple of sentence explanation of what they did there? Or to the road? It, yeah. Um, went through, they did all, they dug out the ditches, hydro seeded. Um, mm -hmm. laid stone in the corner where it loops around right before the hill, the first hill. Um, they laid gravel all the way up mm -hmm. through. Some places they had to build the road up because yep. of the ledge so they couldn't dig ditches. Yep, they had to build it up. They still have water bars in there. <clears throat> Not really. Mm -hmm. They have there's a, there's a couple, yeah, yeah there's, there's some traps. runouts. There's a couple spots where there's like mini water bars. Yeah. I think they were going to go back up and put deeper yeah, water bars that, in. That would be my biggest concern because without those water bars, you have to redirect the water mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or else everything will wash out and it'll be down the bottom of the hill. A lot of it was that they did different slopes at different places for the water to run. Oh, they yeah. wanted it to. I, meant to. I really didn't mean to take a look at it, but I just... They have like a handheld level that they can just put down and it gives you all the slopes. Yeah. So they walked along mm -hmm. that. So, 
Oh, well, great. Should be a hero, but you can't. <laughs> Free beer. <laughs> the building's fixed. But there is no sign at the bottom of the hill anymore. Yeah, it was taken. The no sign was there for like two days and someone stole the brand new sign. Really? Yeah. The road sign? The land shell sign, yeah. Yep. Huh. People are unbelievable. Jason, what about yourself? You know? um, yes. Um, I looked into something that was prompted by the draft change to the personnel policy mm -hmm. that you did, mm -hmm. and I wasn't quite sure what you meant by the change in it, and I wanted to clarify that, but I figured I should look into what other towns do regardless. Which so personnel policy? Which draft? This is the part about um, changing what we do for retirees. Oh, retirement. Okay. So yeah. can you explain what that's meant to do before I... Yep, I have to do that, actually. Um, what Cheryl and I proposed was um, it was adding in retired employee health insurance benefit to mm -hmm. the personnel policy. Right. So it was employees 65 years of age and have worked for the town of Moortown for at least 15 years or reduced hours or can reduce hours to part-time and still be eligible for the same insurance benefits as active full-time employees. Okay. So it's not asking for anything if they're not working. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean that the town would be paying or that the benefits are available? The benefits are available. The employee would still pay the same as what they pay when they're full-time. Mm -hmm. Now that starts getting tricky because once um, as in complicated, because once an employee turns 65, they are Medicare eligible, mm -hmm. and it's a different insurance program. Mm -hmm. um, so this isn't something that VLCT does, I don't think. Mm -hmm. They did refer me to some plans that AARP offers. Um, have you already looked into what the insurance would be? Because it would be different from what our employees have. We're asking for it to be the same. It, yeah, and it can't be because the employee is Medicare eligible. But they don't so have to they, accept Medicare because it costs more than what it would cost them here. It's better coverage here. I don't think that's true. Is it? No, yeah, I don't think so either. I think that they are obligated. If, if they work full time, yeah. then they don't have to take Medicare is my understanding. And afterwards, I don't think, in, in other situations, I don't think there's a choice. And then the question is, what is there in the way of a Medicare wrap policy? What to handle what Medicare does not? So the coverage ends up yeah. being the same. Yeah. And that's what these AARP plans, for example, do when there are mm -hmm. others. But it's a completely different insurance regime than yeah. what employees have. Okay. So, so I think that's that's good information. I think mm -hmm. what we need to do um, because that's a lot of it's kind of getting into an area where we need to spend a lot of time on. Yes, um, I'm just saying. I called VLCT. Here's what they told me. Well, he was looking into it for the cost aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, mean, well, I think that's right. good because we have budgets mm -hmm. coming right on. Yeah. And this is something that we want to put to bed one way or another yeah. this year. So two more sentences. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, what they told me is uh, they don't track this, but from their knowledge, small towns in general do not do this, and large towns in general do. Yeah. Like South Burlington. I have yes. found that, yeah. Right. And uh, towns on our scale generally do not. Mm -hmm. And that's really all I found out so far. All right. Maybe with that information, mm -hmm. Katrina. Yeah, I'll go back. And see what you can come up with. Okay. Let's go with that. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Jason, for uh, public comment? Mm -hmm. Or not public no. comment? No. Okay. That's it for reports. Communications and reports. All right, I have a few different things. First, um, let's start with something Cheryl left. This uh, actually came to, from, to Cheryl Lynn, but from Michelle Safran. They're having their open mic, and they want to know if they can run a um, a banner that says home and mic Friday, Sunday nine, it's about two feet high. It's gonna stretch between the two columns. It's a waterproof type with grommets. 
I don't mind if it's hung, but we need to make sure it's not damaging mm -hmm. anything. So I don't know if you can pass that on. And so I, I talked to Corey this afternoon after that, and it would start, I think it's next weekend. So they'd like to hang it up for the week before yep. each month. Mm -hmm. And so I told her that you guys may want to look at it after the first time it's hung. And she said that was no problem. Yeah, well, yeah. that's a good idea. So did, did she describe how it would be hung from the It's wall? just tire, or tires. <laughs> it's ropes around the top of the column. And the column is square, mm -hmm. so it would hang on that lip right there. So it wouldn't be attached to it at all. Good. No more tires. <laughs> You're tired of it. I am. <laughs> um, so one of the other things, and again, Katrina worked on this for us, uh, it was the nominations for the Municipal Service Awards for both Cheryl and, and uh, Sasha. It was actually only Cheryl and to be nominated. You had to be an elected official. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. And so other things that I have, we got a call from Ray Munn, and he wants to cut some trees. So we'd like to have, I, I said that either you and John, but uh, should go up and look around with um, Martin as well. And he thinks it's, it might be in the, the town right away, but he just wants to make sure that he can do it and you know, his trees. But, yeah. uh, okay. Mm -hmm. um. He spoke to me also about it for a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. and you might want to talk to him because he was, if I understood him correctly, he wanted to take down some trees and restore a stone wall. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you might want to. Yeah, he, 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 he was, yeah, he didn't say. He, he said the the trees were on top of the stone walls. He mm -hmm. just wanted to cut the trees, but I don't know what he was going to. He's going to resurrect the stone wall. Or so he's not expecting the town to cut the trees, but he's just. No, no, no. He wants the okay. people to come up there and just check in with him and uh, yep. making sure everyone's happy with what he would like to do. His and wife just passed away, didn't she? Yes, she did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in addition, I also um, have. Heard from people on old Route 100 mm -hmm. uh, with the construction that's going on. Mary Lou Duke, uh, we were doing ditches and it's on 100, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and also um, the other people at the end, what the heck are their names? But, anyways, I've had Martin go back just to kind of talk with them, you know, to make sure we under they understand why we're doing it, you know, and, and he had. Uh, reached out to them prior, so it wasn't a huge surprise, as, you know, so he communicated, I think, uh, you know, early with them to let them know, but I think anyone that sees the, all the ditching that's being done, mm -hmm. it's such a difference than what, what they had. Um, Was it Henderson on there? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Linda. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and they were all, they were all very nice, uh, but they were all, you know, they just wanted to vent a little bit. So. Yep, uh, the ditches sometimes will cause that in people. Yeah. <laughs> What's the requirement for ditching now? Uh, as far as depth wise, or why is it needed? Uh, basically, it's so the water gets out of your road somewhere. And, you know, you, don't, you want water in the road. Mm -hmm. You can help it. Yeah, and it's been, I think, Martin said around 10 to 12 years since any work had been done there. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of you know, junk trees and alder that grows in the, the right. ditch that people like, and they kind of use those as their guardrails. <laughs> you know, that <laughs> makes them feel safe. But when they take, when you take that out, it, it you know it exposes things, and, and, and they can see the ditches now. So it really, actually, one of them slowed it down. But it, it mm -hmm. quite frankly, it, as they say, it, it frightens them because mm -hmm. now they can see you know, how uh, how big they are. But in a lot of it, it, people need to understand it too. It's the new state standards that we're, we're uh, yep. using. And to your point, is to get the water off the road mm -hmm. rather than out of the ditches. So um, I think it's it's ending well there, but there was a little bit of um, unrest for a little while just because of the, the scope of the work. But I think the guys were, were doing a good job, and uh, I think they had to slow down a little bit. And we, we addressed that as well. 
That is that. And we are at 6.30, so we're right about, we'll come back and we'll do the meeting minutes when John gets here, but we've got Eric here. Hi. How you doing, Eric? Eric. Hey. Okay. How you doing? Good to see you. Hey, Eric. Katrina. Katrina. Yes. I got an email from you. Yes, you did. <laughs> so Eric's here for uh, our annual report for the Mad River Recreation District. The Mad River Valley Recreation District uh, is, as you all know, a uh, municipal uh, organization uh, uh, chartered in 1994 by the three towns, uh, Waitsfield, Faston, Warren, and uh, I guess going past a year ago, uh, there was interest in purchasing Mad River Park. Issue regarding funding, where the soccer fields and lacrosse fields are, purchased from Kingsbury. There's a huge effort to uh, to uh, raise the funds necessary and obtain a grant from uh, the National Park Service uh, Water and Soil Conservation Grant. I forget the name of it, but. Um, about a year ago, uh, the park was purchased and is owned by the Mad River Valley uh, uh, Recreation District. Uh, Moortown <coughs> participates financially and as a voting member on issues related to the Mad River Park. Though more general issues not relating to the Mad River Park, uh, Moortown is not. Uh, voting member, so to speak. Uh, with respect to the park, I think it is the only, I'm quite sure that it is the only uh, property, uh, real piece of real property that is owned by the Recreation District. You guys know that they have a lot of involvement in, uh, you know, maybe issuing grants to smaller organizations, the Path Association, the Mad River Valley Riders, uh, Bike Club, and, you know, one outfit or another for different purposes. Uh, but, you know, I'm the representative, have been for the last uh, close to a year. And a few issues have arisen. With respect to the park, um, you know, there are sports fields. And uh, all the concerns that you'd expect uh, to arise with respect to maintaining and owning uh, open land for the purpose of recreation fields uh, have arisen. Obviously, they want to maintain uh, the quality of the turf. Uh, there has been purchased uh, many pounds of grass seed and mulch or compost, uh, which has been applied. Uh, they've aerated. Uh, they arrange for the mowing. I think one of the Kingsburys may contract to do the mowing. So there's a lot of effort uh, taking place to improve and maintain the quality of the recreation fields. Um, obviously, uh, water is a big issue. Um, and this summer, it was a, a huge issue. The lack of for quite a while with the heat. It's very, very well drained. And uh, so the grass nearly burnt. But, you know, as in the past couple of weeks with the rains, uh, we've rebounded and uh, I think things are going okay. A big issue arose last autumn when the, um, the Wadesfield representative, a, a gentleman by the name of Michael Nucci, is a Wadesfield representative to the district and he's also the, the head of the committee regarding the Mad River Park. He's done a huge amount of work uh, on a volunteer basis to get permits for different things and take care of the fields. He also coaches. He lives right there. <coughs> a huge effort. But he uh, took it upon himself. I think the listers in Waitsfield wanted, you know, summoned him to a meeting at which they explained that, uh, that um, you know, they questioned the basis for the tax-exempt status of the park. And uh, they felt that, like the couples club property in Waitsfield, there would need to be a town-wide vote. And I won't go into the 
details, you may well be familiar with it, but for certain charitable organizations that own property for public purposes, there needs to be a town-wide vote on their tax exemption. Uh, we took a close look at it um, um, and with huge effort, uh, and we included, um, persuaded the uh, state uh, property valuation and review and the Waitsfield listers that duh, the Medford Valley Recreation District is a municipal organization that owns a piece of property for public purposes. Its property is exempt from tax taxation. There is no townwide vote needed. And, uh, you know, there's a, 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 a real concern on the part of the uh, board. Um, and uh, in any event, we succeeded in establishing with the affirmation of the property valuation review, as I mentioned, uh, the, the, the statutory basis for the exemption. And uh, so that's a relief. Uh, unfortunately, was, thank you on that. <laughs> that sounds like it was a huge uh, undertaking. Well, it's, it's, a, a lot of it's a worry. And uh, I was retained to help the district at not, uh, you know, not on a pro bono basis right. uh, uh, to um, articulate the statutory basis for the creation of the Denver Valley District, what the statutes have to say about intermunicipal union districts. Um, you know, obviously, well, you may know about the Winooski Valley Recreation District, uh, which owns many properties throughout the Chittenden County area, which are exempt. And so why this would be treated differently, uh, there's no reason, it's just, who knows why? But you know, the town of Waitsfield listers sure. were looking at the prospect of imposing a property tax on the <laughs> million dollars or whatever. Well, anyway, so so and then when the when the grant list was actually available for review, the abstract, uh, they did not list all of the exempt properties. And so there was still some concern. We had a grievance hearing just uh, out of uh, an abundance of caution and uh, to be sure that, you know, that, 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 that they were on the grant list going to be uh, confirming uh, the exempt status. So, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate. Uh, and, uh, arduous process that should not have been necessary to begin with, but in any event. Um, and then, um, you know, issues have arisen with respect to the use of the parking area. Um, as you may know, they, they uh, created a, a large parking area to try to divert, divert the parking from the Mad River mm -hmm. Park uh, commercial zone over to this new parking area. And, People have parked there, left, you know, left their things in the, you know, the, some of the neighbors are concerned about that. An issue has arisen recently about uh, soccer and lacrosse families driving on the Mad River Park driveway. We are not a member of the Mad River Association that serves that common driveway serving the, you know, where. Mm -hmm. No, not Cabot. Uh, Clearwater filtration is in there. Was Cabot in there? Mm -hmm. They used to be right now. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and a bunch of others. <clears throat> and the, the, the Natural Light Company, Verilux, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so, anyway, so we're working through some issues with respect to the use of that common driveway, which, you know, not being part of the association, we're trying to get soccer players and their families not to use that driveway. They want, they, the, the association has asked to be listed as a named insured on the district's insurance policy. Fear being that, you know, somehow they're going to be um, liable for an accident if a kid runs after a soccer ball or something and 
we're working through that issue. Uh, we're working through uh, an issue of uh, the, there's a private uh, company recording studio right adjacent to the fields and he wants to uh, negotiate a license to host a, a music event. So we're working through that and uh, trying to you know reach an agreement that would be a year from now. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. We've uh, improved the fields, mulch, seed, aerated. Uh, we're working on trying to cite a source for water and maybe pricing out or getting bids for a, a well. Uh, uh, you know, we, we anticipate uh, every year we're going to run into this problem where if it's hot and dry for a while, we're going to. Um, have know, they had that problem prior to this? They've had that problem, and it is ex exceedingly well drained. Uh, I mean, it's. Uh, and so it just doesn't hold moisture. And then the grass dies and weeds crop up. Yeah, you know, which, you know, has been the way it's been, right? Uh, but we like to have good quality fields uh, to, you know, at least be on par with the kind of standards maintained by other, you know, we have hosting soccer tournaments, lacrosse tournaments, things like that. Safer, not be hard to add. So I spent my son plays there all year round and it's one of the better fields he does play on. Yeah. yeah. I mean yeah, the grass did die, but everywhere it died for a while. Right. How um at participation, I know they were in, uh, anticipating more activity there. Has that continued to grow? Well there's um across Lisa's fields yeah. in the spring. Uh the Soccer, never go to soccer, leases the fields uh, for fall soccer. Um, you know, I think otherwise people may sort of on an ad hoc basis. I think there might be a crew of people at one of the businesses in the association who play ultimate there. I say, uh, midday, so, you know. Uh, but, you know, the, there is, there has now been constructed and soon to be uh, sort of uh, commemorated uh, pavilion um, and uh, store, you know, the, the, the permits were issued, obtained and issued for uh, a storage shed, a pavilion, uh, a kiosk uh, that's sort of coincident with the Mad River path being extended to the recreation fields. And so there's a kiosk, um, obviously the parking lot, the stormwater issues. So, you know, as far as more people using it for field sports, I'm, I don't think it's necessarily any more active than, uh, than it has been. My daughters grew up there playing mm -hmm. soccer. My guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, um, they were talking about uh, doing more tournaments and activities like that to bring more people into town. I just had not know if that had Well, yet. there's a lot of, you know, there, there are different things going on with different uh, groups trying to, of course, uh, generate more traffic in the yeah. valley. Um, the Mad River Bikers, I don't know, the Path Association, <laughs> uh, you know, they've, they've constructed and installed uh, trailhead markers um, at different paths uh, around the valley. And this is done by the recreation district, uh, including at the Mad River Park, uh, these kiosks, uh, which are attractive. You know, people come and they want to yeah. hike and walk and whatever. Um, but, um, you know, there is some hope that the Sugar Works, is that what it's called? Sugar House Soundworks, the guy um, who owns the recording studio, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's state-of-the-art recording studio. Uh, just happens to be right there in the valley. Oh, this guy came from Austin, Texas. Eric, um, what's his last name? Oh, it escapes me. But um, he, he, he wants to host this annual event 
modestly, in part as a fundraiser for the Ned River Park, um, and in part as a, you know, just a community event. Um, but he knows what he's doing as far as promoting and producing an event like this, and, uh, you know, it was hoped that we'd have things in place for him to host this this autumn. Uh, it didn't work out, so we're looking to next year. But if it, you know, I mean, there's a concern, obviously, the park uh, is, uh, or the district is concerned about liability, wanting to uh, protect itself in all ways uh, from any kinds of uh, liability. And so that's that's an issue with indemnification. and. Um, you know, it may be that others, I think there was uh, a feeler put out by some other group approaching the district. You know, I think the group that may end, may ultimately have ended up in Church North Sparking Lot or wherever it was. Friendly gathering. Friendly gathering. Yeah. So I'm not sure it's suitable for that. Right. Yeah, that might be a more often. Mainly we want it. I mean, and then we have restrictions under the uh, grant. You know, far. I mean, this is you know, this is a municipal organization uh, with all the rights and responsibilities uh, of other municipal corporations, the Mad River Valley Recreation District, and uh, you know, it's a public use recreation owned by a municipal corporation, unlike the uh, Waterbury Ice Center, which is a separate uh, entity. And for which they had to have a, a vote. So anyway, um, if our pitch to maintain our exemption is fully <coughs> public use, we've got to be careful about uh, for what you know the purposes for which we might uh, license or lease the park. Now, uh, fifteen hundred bucks from the town of Moortown. I don't, for the very same reason, I don't think we should have a. Uh, should need a W nine. Don't pay anybody without a W nine. This is like even even like people like the appropriations. How about the town of Duxbury? If Duxbury mm -hmm. does something, mm -hmm. we have one for the town of Taylor in there for mm -hmm. shared services. Yep. Of them. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> because it's obviously it's a, a, a the tax ID number for the payee. Yeah, but it's also primary purpose is for tax withhold and there mm -hmm. should, should be no withholding because we're a municipality. Mm -hmm. so, oh, oh, you still need one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you tried to? Oh, that comes from Cheryl. Lynn, yeah. so, uh, okay. She's just. I'm just relaying. relaying. <laughs> so the treasurer said that, you know, those are. Okay. Yeah, what I was saying is even the people that we give donations to that we vote on every year for a town meeting, we still get a W9 from that too. If I give you a W9, will I get a donation? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, give us a W9. Okay, I've used up my time, uh, yours. And uh, is there anything you want to know about the district or the park? Mm -hmm. Now, that was a good presentation. No, that's good. It was, gets me up to date. Do you guys get minutes from the Valley District? I thought I saw that the last email sending out the minutes yeah. from our July meeting may have included um, more town officials. No. I don't think we do. No. I haven't seen it. Certainly do not. you want? That would be great. If it I mean, the, the, the Mad River Valley Recreation District has had its own website, madrivermrwhatever.org. But I think they are in the process of taking that down and just using a Facebook site as their official site. Mm -hmm. But we have the same obligations to post minutes, yeah. agenda, etc. And um, so there is, there has been, it's in transition, but there has been, you go on their site and you can read all about what they do and what the business they've attended to. What, yeah, if, uh, Katrina, if you could give Eric our or email or something on that service yeah. list. Yeah. So that would be good to get it. Or every time I get them, I'll just forward to you. Yeah, you have my email. Yeah. Yeah, do so. yeah, that. That's great. She can send them with yeah. us. Yeah. Perfect. That would be better. And uh, so. Oh. <laughs>
we push it in. As soon as you walk out the door, you know. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I can say we get we, have, we need monthly, except we didn't meet in June or something. I don't know, eleven months out of the year. Nice. I'll, I'll forward those minutes. If you'd like me to appear here to report more than once a year, <laughs> let me know. We'll do that. Um, if you'd like me to summarize something for the town. Report. I shouldn't have mentioned that. <coughs> because I'm the one that does it. So you just mentioned it right in front of me. But that would be excellent. That would be just the town report. Yeah. Yeah. Just a show we spend it for fifteen hundred. Show people. Oh, yeah. I know what I want. Sure. The, the Nether Valley Planning District is also an intermunicipal district created by the three based in Waitsfield. And you may have read in the Valley News, or the Valley Report, mm -hmm. the idea that the planning district is, is with some involvement by the Central Vermont Regional Planning Committee, uh, thinking about a, a local option tax, 1% tax on sales. And so um, in part to raise money to be permanent financing for the Manor Park. Oh. Um, but I would hope people, obviously Montpelier, Burlington, you know, other towns have a mm -hmm. local option yeah. tax. And, and so we in the district are wondering why we couldn't just do that. <laughs> <laughs> because people don't want to pay the extra 1%. <laughs> Think of the run on uh, <laughs> at the Morgan General Store. <laughs> so anyway, I mean that's something that you know, and, and I think you know the Valley Towns. They have a tri-town meeting, which is coming up. You know, I I don't know to what extent whether the select board, as a participant with respect to the park at least, you know has direct kind of uh, communication with the uh, other three valley towns with you know right yeah. but I, I don't rely on this conduit of information i'll report on the doings of the district mm -hmm. but you know obviously you guys were solicited to participate mm -hmm. um, and thank you for that your participation there yeah. I have one quick Question. Yes. Um, part of the pitch was that additional revenues were anticipated to help uh, bring down the maintenance costs. And it sounds like this tax issue may be affecting that. Well, I don't okay. think, I mean, that, that is just in its infant stages. I mm -hmm. mean, actually, um, what's his name? A select board member from Warren. Maybe the chair of the Warren Select Board, whose name? Any Cunningham, maybe? No. Or is he still on it? No, no, no. Oh, what's his name? Anyway, he, sh he attended our mm -hmm. the district's most recent monthly meeting on the 21st of August. And it was maybe a day or two after an article had been or the follow the week following this article in the Valley Reporter about, you know, local option tax idea. And so he made a pitch, I think, you know, in the hope that the district for its part would be, you know, lend its voice to that. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you know, it's just something to observe and follow. But I don't think that I, I, I don't I think that's a very Kind of recent idea, and I think um, I would bet that that's would. not what yeah. what we were told during the pitching part of this. It was more additional <coughs> usage by outside parties. And so, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, mm -hmm. I think there's a hope that we will be able to do that. Um, I, I, I guess I wasn't fully aware of that uh, when I was. Uh, um, yeah, you better get a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
um, and resume. But, uh, so, um, but you know, we're, we're going to hope to see if we can have this music festival, mm -hmm. you know, with the proviso that we are, uh, this is, uh, uh, not only are, are, uh, are we bound under the terms of our grant to use mm -hmm. this for recreation field purposes? So renting it out to, mm -hmm. you know, soccer tourneys or lacrosse tourneys or ultimate or whatever, mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. cover our costs, yes. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's got to be done in a way that we're not putting at risk our status as a public mm -hmm. entity and that we're not exposing ourselves to undue liability for, like, people drinking mm -hmm. beer at a music concert or whatever. And then also the issue of, of parking and driving and circulation, and working with the park association, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the business owners association. So, um, but, you know, I don't know, that, you know, other than trying to get out for, for sports events or, uh, I don't know, you know, I mean, I suppose it's craft. They have Kingsbury's field, or uh, the Kenyon's field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. And that probably means uh, so, stay well, tuned on that. One other thing before you leave, Eric, are you going to be able to make um, next week's meeting? We have invited Planning Commission, Subdivision Regulations. Right, DRB and us. So we instead of just like handing things out, you know, here the rules and regulations, get everyone's input. So I hope you can make it. Hope so. I, it's in my calendar. All right. I thought it was this Thursday, and then I had to check. <laughs> next next Monday. Monday. Yeah, six o'clock. Yeah. Six o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, we get to get uh, your input. Thanks. Nice yeah, time. that sign on the Moortown Town Hall for the. Yeah. We want to check the sign ordinance. We did already. <laughs> So we'll be expecting an application. She oh, said it was fine. <laughs> what a, no doubt. <laughs> You'll definitely be here next Monday to talk to Jamie. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, thank you. Nice to see you all. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, so uh, why don't we get moving ahead? Everyone's all set. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like to wait for John for the quotes for the Lister business, mm -hmm. and so maybe uh, why don't we do the town hall chair and table round? Let's see. Sure. Uh, so I think since our last meeting, I've had like five people call me and ask if they could borrow tables and chairs because there's nowhere in the valley to rent them anymore. Mm. There's because wedding events and events is closed. So I don't. My personal feeling is I don't think we should just give them out. If they get ruined, we don't have any money to recoup them. So I made an agreement, if you guys want to do it, there's one here for each of you. That I went and looked at all the different places that do rent them and got like the average prices of what they rent them for. <clears throat> so most places rent eight foot tables for $10 each and chairs are based on they don't have obviously the same chairs, but about $3 a piece. Mm -hmm. And there would be a $150 deposit, which is the same deposit you have to put down when you went to town hall itself. Um, it's almost the same contract, just a little shorter than the town hall rental. Because, um, uh, so we have lent them out to two people, Sherilyn and Cheryl O'Kate, or Cheryl O'Kate, that said that they would make a donation and we didn't really get anything. <laughs> so it was two hours of my time on the weekend being there to unload and you know, to be there for them, so. Yeah, that's unacceptable. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Spending your weekend time. Yeah. <laughs> on my tables and chairs. <laughs> I'm fine with the record of the It's, mm -hmm. like you said, I think if we just, because there's no, I mean, we can start letting them out and everyone will use them and the wear and tear on them. Mm -hmm. 
So the replace, just so you know, to the replacement costs mm -hmm. for a table is one hundred dollars, for a chair it's one hundred twenty. Okay, so then why is the charge for a chair so much less than the charge for a table? Because nobody, because the chairs are a lot sturdier than the tables. For one, they can go through okay. a lot more, and like I said, I went through all the other rental places throughout Vermont, and that's. If we charge enough, seen them after, I'm not going to rent them right. anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what's the chances that they're going to ruin a chair and a table? It's mostly more time. I mean, it's been more time residents. They haven't gone far. Hopefully for a table less than one in ten, and for a chair less than one in three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Ray, any comments on this? So who will be, will it be you that will yes. be handling? Sherilyn and I both, like we do the town hall now with the one. Yeah, yeah. Any kind of revenue helps. Huh? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there are, I'm, just, I'm sure there's always cases where, you know, we may, uh, we can let this um, waive, the, waive the fee, but mm -hmm. um, let's wait till those come up. Yeah. You know, but yeah. like anything, let's try to do it. We had one rental last week that um, you guys have said that we were waiving the fee for more time residents, so Sharon, Cheryl signed off on it because it was in between. It was a, it was a, a funeral, not a funeral, you know what I mean? Wait. Hey, yeah, something. <laughs> but they did great. I mean, they, you know, they signed the contract, they gave the deposit. It was all clean after. They didn't play so. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. What are you dealing with <coughs> scheduling, um, say, the possible need of tables and chairs in the town hall? I'm sure you Well, I mean, so, yeah, we have to, obviously, it all mm -hmm. bears mind if they're available, then they're not, you know. Mm -hmm. But we have, uh, there's not any event that uses every chair and table. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of chairs and tables in there. I move to um, accept this. The table and chair rental agreement. Second. Five seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor, vote aye. 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 Well, Thank you. Done. Well done. Uh, picture we yep. that together and uh, doing that work. Do we, do you know if Martin's going to be coming on? He this? said he was so, last I talked to him. All right. You know, well, why don't we just go ahead and start to look at the court for this work. We can't wait for John to be on it. So although I'm afraid John's not here because they've had a while and put his dog down, I guess. Oh. Oh. So, he will, he will be in. It was, I, I don't know if it was today they had to, but I think his kids were, his kids, right? His kids were down, maybe? Yeah. That's what. So you have um, copies of Somewhere there, of all the members. I'll give you numbers to go with. What you're looking at too. Because we obviously already have a current contract with Memory. For other stuff. So when you're looking at that, our current contract price is eight thousand one hundred and ninety. Say again. Eight thousand one hundred and ninety is our current contract with Memory. So the difference is two thousand six hundred twenty-five. Change. 26, 25, so. Yeah. So just to be clear, this includes the work that they do now for the 8,000 This is not an additional one? No, no, no. That's already the contract we mm -hmm. have. And to be clear, too, this only, this does not include renewing tax maps. That's a separate contract mm -hmm. in itself. So this is every reappraisals, all of that stuff. So Katrina, on the front page, mm -hmm. can you point out? So it added more time in office administration. That line, it added just more hours there. How many? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. Cheryl didn't break it down for me line by line. Okay. And then added more on um, the cloud service is new. <coughs> that part is new. No change to remote work? I don't believe so because I think it's in the cloud. Something to do with that. And of course, the setup that I left is new, but that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, did you order this, the new agreement, or one of this, um, Katrina, or whatever? Um, I got the um, lowdown from Sherilyn because I don't, she knows way more about this than I do. And this is everything that the listers are required to do is on this agreement which is what she asked the quote to be. Mm -hmm. And then I also have the numbers for you of what the listers, we've paid the listers for the last set eight years. You anticipated I did. <laughs> did you, um, yeah, is that a sheet you could just copy and give to everyone? Oh, sure. Please. Mm -hmm. Totally no listers. You 
Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot to, to think about when we're making this decision. My, my first thought, and it's by no means a, a considered look at it yet, but my first thought is we would still want listers to review the work and sign off. Yeah, I, I agree there. We, you certainly, I, I think in statutes, you need to sign off on yep, the right. list mm -hmm. regardless. And to me, that makes more sense than simply just continuing listers and say, okay, they'll just go do their thing. Right, because we need that. I mean, there needs to be the face of the town and the communication there. So I think that's why, uh, and Jason, you're good with the analytics. This is it's kind of taking that. Uh, Thirty-eight hundred dollars and then twenty-six. One looking, trying to figure out what, you know, where that work is coming from, and, and mm -hmm. what we can save with for the listeners, but also what we can have these guys do because, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe more efficient and might save us money in the long run mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. One thought I have too, with, like they <coughs> was going forward, if they if those two stop being listers, are you going to get anyone? <laughs> as qualified as the people you already have. Mm -hmm. I mean, the one on here we got, it's in there, and he's already resigned. <laughs> so, I'm alone again, you know? <laughs> that's mm -hmm. another thing, is you might not have people that are willing to do that's it anymore. Good. That's a valid concern. Yeah. Um, another is, uh, since the board discussed adding dimensions to the tax maps, be very aware that that's something that has to be maintained, and it's something that Will make errors more apparent, which is good for them. But the outcome of that would be more listed time to maintain and amend those numbers. Right. I mean, they're always should be maintaining all things in those mm -hmm. tax maps, but mm -hmm. you think that the, uh, those dimensions would be more so? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm sure I think so also. Um, one of the reasons for that is simply that it's more in your face. People will see all the numbers. Yep. Now that's a good thing. It will lead to more accurate tax maps. The consequence, though, is yes. More <laughs> yeah, more confrontation, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. But that's almost one of the the reasons why we do want it. There. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, it will create it, but yeah. it's for that transparency for people to understand yes. their, their boundaries. My my only objection to that was only the price because to me it's something that they can do by flipping a switch. Oh. And I think we could do that. Well, I, I, I haven't heard back, but mm -hmm. if you, I'm sure you read the mm -hmm. minutes or maybe it was your comments or something, but it was actually 4,000, 3,000. We've allocated 3,000, so we mm -hmm. may get a bunch of better deal regardless <laughs> of if they want to do it. Just, which I don't know, even know how that happened. It was even in my written notes, 4,000. Mm -hmm. So is there any other comments or, or questions on this? Obviously we can, you know, we have a lot of the, we have some work to do uh, to look at this, but right. this is something that we need to, um, to do by, or maybe I'm just saying that by budget time, where, where we want to go. Um, but certainly because we, you know, uh, I don't want to get into eliminating um, elected officials. Mm -hmm. Mr. So uh, mm -hmm. thinking yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't see an effect on the budget. If we kept listers to do new sign off, we're probably talking about the same total number. Yeah, it could probably, you know, mm -hmm. could possibly could be for mm -hmm. getting to that. I'm more wary of this, this word right here, estimate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and at the set, and as you pointed out, it's 75 an hour or something. Mm -hmm. But just, I would like that as a, as a timeline to get it done by that. Whether we use that or excuse or not, because we have to. That makes but sense. Just so we can get it done. And everyone knows what they're doing or not. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, why don't we go ahead and uh, mm -hmm. our approval of the eight. 20, uh, 2018 meeting minutes. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes of 820. Any second on that? Again. Okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor of aye. 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 All right. 
So we are waiting on the farm uh, palm farm retaining wall. Why don't we again yeah, because I would like to wait for John to look and see what else we have here to go through. I'm just gonna take one more break. Yeah. How big a parcel is it? 1.9 acres. Which was adjusted from 0.45 when the new tax maps came out. And... What's the address again? Sorry. Yeah. Um, it's 1410 Stevensburg Road. Martin. Martin, you know where 1410 Stevensburg Road is? I think it's just a piece of land, but I don't think know what area it's at. I don't know for sure. Isaac Graham? We have a possible place to park your vehicles. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only thing I did. Yeah. That was the uh, map. Someone uh, offered the town of this property a couple acres, so I didn't know how long. I wonder if it's ready to tell me how long that road is. Yeah, so if. Oh, then Google Maps. Yeah, why don't we find out what it is? And if it has gravel in it, they take it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I guess on a situation like that, have you, John would be a good person to ask this, but was the town in the past that we we take a piece of property with it? We have, we have, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think uh, where that was. I guess that's right, I don't know, I think that's actually this thing, that's right. But I, I think it came under, I know it came under the road. That's where I had something going on. If it was worth anything. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. no. no. We can look at a picture of it though. Yeah. It's about 1786. Okay, what would be a good reason to have it, you know? I don't yeah. location, but. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a, I don't know if it would be saleable property. But if it was, I would think this guy would but probably sell it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that makes me wonder why would he just sell it? Well, why don't we look? Sure, if you could find out exactly. What what you you look look that? 14, 14, 10. It's right on the Duxbury line. It's closer to Route One Hundred on Duxbury than it is down to One Hundred B. I'm trying to see how far it is from Route One Hundred. Yeah, when I have more time, I can take a look and see if I can tell if it's in a wetland or something. Yeah, yeah, it's 0.7 miles off of Route 100 down Stevens Road. What's the basically Duxbury? It, it, his address is Duxbury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mail address. 
Yeah. <laughs> Almost one and a half miles up. So mm -hmm. This way, if that's yeah. the way I can. So that's going to put it pretty close to the town line. Mm -hmm. Maybe a turnaround or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty good one there right now. But yeah. So. Well, let's just try to figure out where it is. And yeah, go on. Martin, do you know? Anyone else was coming on that routine? Wall? I don't know. Uh, I saw it to look at the agenda. That's why I just. Well, we can get into that. It's, I don't. And if we have questions for them, we're all concerned. Do you? Are you guys familiar? Did you see the um, emails through? Right. Well, that it was there. Um, the retaining wall. It's over here mm -hmm. on Pony Farm Road. Mark, will you pull up a chair? Slide in. Um, so we're originally here, there's a proposal for a retaining wall, but I've also uh, was talking and to Dave Reed, and he said you mentioned, uh, and he had originally mentioned a uh, guardrail. Right. I, I mean, I've had talks with Dave as well regarding this, and it originally approached me as would we put guardrail up, and I said I didn't know if we would, you know. And then he was concerned. I guess the big um, concern is the new or the owner of the building will be living there now, and he's concerned about traffic potentially crashing into the house and it is very close to the road um, so I told him I said there's a couple different options there I really um, wouldn't necessarily like to see guardrail there um, um, we, you know really no need for it other than to protect the house so uh, he said he would get a hold of his uh, the friend and the owner had a friend with uh, engineer, yeah, so it came back with that um, fairly elaborate wall structure. So I just kind of, in casual meeting with him at the um, gas station down here one night, just told him, I said, in the end, I said, if it's strictly about safety, then possibly guardrail would be the best bet to go with in the end. Um, and then, of course, it comes that it's not just safety, it's also, um, I guess they put new windows in and had to install a new window. They had a window broken um, by a rock. Um, he said that's not a um, common occurrence, but it's happened over the years. They've had stones go through the window and, and whatnot. So, um, the, I've gotten no issues as far as really trying to protect the house. I mean, I can understand where they're coming from, from a safety standpoint. At this point, um, the only thing I would be concerned about is uh, meeting the MUTCD codes, you know, uh, wall. You have to have, um, you know, shearable things to keep from um, being impaled by projectiles and whatnot. And I'm not sure if that wall would qualify under those guidelines. Right. Um, so possibly in the end, guardrail from a safety standpoint would meet the MUTCD, um, but would not help them out on their um, protecting the glass on the windows. So possibly he still needs to. <coughs> right, and that might be his, he wants to put screens or something over his windows. Right, or something. So, um, I'm more than willing to work with them and come up with a solution. I'm just not sure what that solution is going to be. Uh, Cindy, uh, this house is, uh, it's always been there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Has anybody ever been in this house? Not to my knowledge. So, why is there some put the windows in this? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if they're doing a, a rearrangement.
arrangement and um, Dave said some sort of a possible bedroom there or something so I think it was that was a little bit more but as far as I know nothing's ever no vehicles have ever gone off the road and struck it that I'm aware of but that doesn't mean that it hasn't happened or that it could happen. Is that a location where planting something could help? Possibly I mean even some shrubbery mm -hmm. might you know, if, if it had a chance to get mature Maybe. enough, it would be some sort of a hedge. It's really close to the road. I mean, I would mm -hmm. recommend yeah. taking a look at it and see that it's very close to the road. So anything they do for protection is going to be automatically in the right way, you know, mm -hmm. any work that they do. So um, I, I took a been by there enough, but I actually just slowed down the road. I just see right, mm -hmm. and uh, it is in a precarious position. You know, yeah, we can understand why they would mm -hmm. want her some something. Right. Um, so, uh, is it? Would, would you say it's closer to the road than like where Fred Ledoux's house? Because I, I would uh, think probably, that's very close to the yeah, road. Yeah, um, probably a little bit closer, not by a lot. The only thing that would make me a little bit nervous is it is in a little bit of a corner, not a sharp corner, but it is a little bit more of a corner. But yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, it's similar to, I'd say it's a little bit closer than... Um, I think the, the thing that makes like. a difference to me on that one, if you were... Because you're coming from, coming from this direction, it's not... No, 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 no. It's coming from the other direction, you're coming down that hill and, and taking... Yeah, if it was super slippery and you locked up your brakes and you would it would probably carry you right into the into the do we have any house. guardrail or any money for guardrail or any uh, we don't um, budget for it um, usually it's part of a project thing we we don't currently have any rail kicking around or anything that we could install but it's not um, do you know how much <laughs> that would, that would be not terribly expensive, I would say. Um, I, know I wouldn't dare guess, but I could certainly get a quote on a you know, twenty to thirty foot, um, you know, quote, and see what they came up with. But mm -hmm. I think I'd look I initially look into that, and then we should look into this wall. I, I'm concerned about the the. Uh, what the acronym? Yeah, the yeah, the uh, uh, yeah, traffic control devices. Right. It's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a standard um, thing, and I, that's the only thing that I'm concerned about is whether the town would be adopting some liability or right. allowing them. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm almost thinking if you go with a guardian, you know, right? Yeah. Mean, so. yeah. You do see all the other stuff I included in that? Yeah. Like historically, well, never a lot of walls in the regular life. That's yeah. part of it as well. Yeah. Right. Because if you read, because um, Cheryl brought me up to it, and I remember reading a lot in the newspaper about the, the bad the bad Oh, yeah, yeah, the whole force. And <laughs> so I, I don't want to, that's constant, and it's sometimes it's more or less, less expensive to do something like a guardrail or tell them to put in a hedge behind it or something right. mm -hmm. to protect their glass. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that way, it, um, it also takes us out of that liability that someone came and asked for protection that we didn't give. Um, yeah, no, I can certainly get a quote on that and see what it would be. Um, you know, when he first approached me, it was kind of uh, along the same lines. I was like, well, you know, maybe a wall or, you know, whatever. Right. Wall, you know, maybe it goes away. Yeah. It didn't go away, so we're, we're following up on it. And now it's, uh, um, you know, they're, they're putting a $20,000. Right, right, exactly. And so I think to, uh, in this particular instance, simplifying it would be best. Um, the wall's fine, as far as I can see, at least from a road work standard. It's just like I said, I'd be concerned about allowing it and then Mm -hmm. Whether we adopt and the liability off of that, allowing yeah. that structure in the right way. Yep. Um, yeah, because it's not even them, it's mm -hmm. someone else who comes down and hits it. Right, exactly, exactly. Right. Is there anything grant eligible about 
guardrail on that sort of thing? Um, nothing that I've seen. I mean, usually if we do guardrail, it's tied to a grant project that we've done, but I've never done just guardrail itself, you know, other than a few, you know, like the backside of the common yeah. and stuff. But I mean, any way to write it up as a safety improvement? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that, that new one that yeah. she just sent us had a bunch right. of different ones. Yeah, and that's okay. awesome. Yeah. I would, yeah, I mean, just a, so we, I would say under a thousand dollars would be my guess for guardrail. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think it would be. I think the trip charge would be as much as the rail itself. That's what I was just, to get, just to get them here to put up. Nope. Well, but, you know, anything we've done in the past has been pretty much used rail, which is completely adequate. And, yeah. You know, so, but, if you could look yeah, into that, so especially sure. if it's under a thousand dollars, I mean, that's. Right. But we'd want to, you know, definitely would, would want to have that as a firm number. I'd want to make some of course, I know, but that would be my guess. So. All right. What else you had going on, man? Um, Did you get everyone 100, the old 100 stuff now? Yes, to some extent, I guess. Um, I did have a conversation with Mary, uh, who was. Um, Ladoop there, and I think we're on the same page there at the farm. Our member came to find me. I worked down there two days in a row. Um, he saw me and didn't come to make any contact. He talked with Rodney today, sharing some of the same concerns. Um, and we just, Rodney told him that you know we weren't done. That you know allowed to finish the work, and then you know if the complaints or concerns are still there. Um, I think it's just the shock value is right. still there. It's very different, you know. So there's, I've heard from a few different people, the south entrance is a little overwhelming. I mean, it makes it look like we've done major ditching and whatnot, but in actuality that, so if you turn into the south entrance, the left-hand side of that road, that ravine was always there. It just was covered with grassy debris and stuff. So um, same thing with on the right, once you get down where it flattens out, there's a fairly steep embankment for 15 feet or so. And um, Barb and Mary Lou were like, well, did you guys make that? Or, you know, has it always been there? And I'm like, it, it's always been there. It's just been buried under, you know, cat bush and, brushy debris so it, it's there and it will grow back to that it's just a little overwhelming when you take away the foliage you know I, I, everyone is there i understand their their concerns but yeah. i would like to have a group for you guys and a nice job and a lot of it you're too you gotta get the color where the to the bottom I mean, correct yes yeah, like um art's concerns are um the culverts are deep um and Along the flat, at least, we're not setting that depth. The depth is set by the culverts that are there, you know, in place. We're not, we've changed a few culverts, but we haven't gone any deeper with them. Um, so obviously we have to ditch to that culvert. And at one time or another, that ditch was that deep at one point. It's just, it's filled in and it's, um, so when you open it back up, it looks overwhelming, so. Oh, just continue to try to work with them down there. Yeah, I'm going to watch things. We can, yeah, keep the uh, mm -hmm. keep the open dialogue, and um, you know, very hopeful to get wrapped up down there and get out of there on two different projects. So. Heard nice things about the Lynch Hill. Yeah, the, uh, the work you guys did. Yeah, no, it came out great. Really happy with that. So, did you talk to Dan today? I did uh, via email. He no. gave us no money. He did, yeah, I see that with that, that. Yeah, with that. So, yeah, no, we'll be um, doing a um, culvert install on Bat Hennessy. We better we're going to move the excavator out and do that culvert um, up there. It's uh, at the Y with uh, Flynn Road. Um, there's a beaver pond there, and it's been historically washes out every spring and traps the residents on the other side. So I think in a lot, the last three years, we've been up there every spring to 
Did they bring the culvert in? Is that the one? That they yeah. The culvert in? Yes, we brought the culvert up there. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be tackling that tomorrow. So are you guys going to skipping around? There was that uh, garden reel that was over on. Yes. Uh, yeah. Gallery. Gallery. Yes. yes. Got it on my to so do list. I think it's just something we'll take to remove. Yeah, it looks right like out. from the picture, it just looks like there's a little firm behind that, so it could. Yeah. Move. It's been, it's from a safety standpoint, I have no idea why it was really ever installed. Um, I don't know why. It's really not needed. Uh, it's been in that condition forever. So it really, yeah, I mean, it could just come out and be that. So I thought it'd be perfectly fine. So, um, and then we have, we'll be going, we'll be jumping around a little bit, but we've got uh, uh, work up on um, Howes Road, Four Corners, with the common Howes Road, Deb Feldman's uh, mm -hmm. ditch there to do with some work in front of Carl mm -hmm. As long as you're talking about deep, Ditching? I have a question about that mm -hmm. area because that gets really muddy. Why? Uh, that whole four corners, five corners area there. Yeah. Um, north end of Hathaway Road, Common Road. Right. Can anything there be ditched deeper to stop that or to reduce that? Or? Yes, I. Yeah. You're talking more on Hathaway that that. And area. also that yeah. little section that gets to the four corners from Hathaway. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one because of the house, because of uh, mm -hmm. Eric's house right there. Mm -hmm. There'd be, you know, nothing we could do on yeah, that side of the road. Right there, right there. Uh, the other side of the road, the water's pretty much trapped there. There's uh, mm -hmm. no culvert or anything. It's basically a retention pond. The water has to evaporate mm -hmm. that. If you notice in the spring, it, it uh, there's usually yeah, a puddle where right. it, has to, mm -hmm. it has to evaporate. Because you can't send it over to the, the Carl's property on the other Correct. side. Correct. Which I've already reached out to Carl in regards to uh, Deb's issue because mm -hmm. there's really no place to send that water either. Um, so we're kind of work, working on some sort of a solution to to alleviate that without turning it from Deb's problem into Carl's problem. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And the end of Hathaway Road there? Yeah. Um, is there anything that definitely on the list? I don't want to say that it'll get done this year because it probably won't. <laughs> but yeah, that whole flat from um, down below your place mm -hmm. all the way up through the ditches need to be redone. And the road, what's really, I think the biggest issue there is just lack of material. There's really no material. If you notice, it would be great. We're into. Um, yeah, that would the be bigger great. nuggets that like the two and a half mm -hmm. inch that's more of a base material that that's more yeah. expensive than the ditching though. So. Correct, yes. <laughs> yes. So yeah, it's definitely on the list. My driveway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you stitching and gravel. Um anything else, Martin? Guys? Yeah, I should probably let you know what's on the road. We're already way over by the other pickup, but it's uh, sitting at the clouds. Mm -hmm. Brought it for an inspection, and it, uh, it needs all new ball joints in the front. And after they do that, it'll have to be realigned. And what year is this? Uh, 2011. This is 2011. So that's probably not a really cheap repair. So we'll just continue to back up the dollars amount on that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those to look at. It's hard to right. know. I figured it would probably be uh, oh. mm -hmm. worth trying to get another year out of it. Um, in hindsight, it definitely cost more than it was worth trying to keep it. But had a pickup before we didn't have much to go on, so. Yeah, and I think that's good news. I think mean, in the future when you're looking to replace that, you might want to think about something a little bit yeah, bigger, bigger. Yeah. Different setup. Yeah. Well, so. mm -hmm. um, speaking of which, just to think about, at some point we should have a conversation about capital needs. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, to start making your list and what's important, what is it, when. <coughs> Any other questions for Martin or Martin for us? Or? Is that it? Okay. Oh, we're supposed to look at, uh, well, look at uh, Raymond, some trees up there with Raymond at some point. Okay. Um, I, unless they're different, I've probably looked at them with them yeah. already. Um, but maybe you can just look we'll on just the, on the wall. Yeah, on that rock wall. They talk to you. Well, I think about a year ago. Yeah, that's what I meant. And, and, and I told him he could cut the trees he wanted. Yeah. Maybe he's looking for us. Yeah. So. I mean, I don't think there's anything that's a danger. No, I don't think that's a hazard on the road. No, I think that just if we do work in that area, maybe we can get them down. But otherwise, I'd say there probably is. But. Yeah, I think he was going to do it all himself. He yeah. Was, he wants to do just want to talk to a couple of people to make sure we were all set with him. Jason said that he mentioned yeah. to him that he was looking to repair the wall or do something. Yeah, I think he's looking to get it aesthetically more, you know, defined and, and whatnot there. So. Uh, I think he wanted to talk to you. I didn't understand this part, but I think he wanted to talk to you about whether the road needed to shift at all to do that. Okay. I didn't quite follow that. Um, it's probably um, you know, just in just going off a of past dialogue that I've had with him. He's probably concerned because the road has kind of encroached somewhat mm -hmm. towards the wall. So he's probably just looking to get it shaped back up mm -hmm. where it needs to be. Kind of off this wall. Yeah, yes, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why he wanted. I was wondering why he really wanted to yeah. look at a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think the he didn't was there say that. Before the room. Yeah. <laughs> the room. I guess uh, I guess we mm -hmm. had a tire uh, fiasco this weekend. Somebody dumped a bunch of tires out there and broke. I think it's been cleaned up. Mm -hmm. What I've been told. So. Or did they someone figure out who did it? Yeah, they yeah, the state police were involved, so they've got them. But they're cleaned up now, so I was looking at it saying, oh, Greg, it will be cleaning up 30 tires. Huh? Were you 30 tires? It was a good size pile. Yeah. It was uh, probably halfway up. Up the hill? Yeah. yeah. It was up the hill? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not in the hill, but around, like if you were doing the whole loop. Oh, okay. Where they have the little circle spot. Someone does something like that. I mean, who are the people that do these those type of things? Did they check for the sign that's lost? Did they, the blue people look at the sign? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not that great. Yeah. Especially in the middle of the day when people are going up the road and you get seen doing it. It's, it's weird. It's like uh, everybody that drives that loop, they all oh, love it because they like to be outdoors. You know, love to. You know, like the nature and thing. And as they're doing it, they're throwing their beer cans out. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, there you go, the beer can. Let's just drive around some more. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, the, the, they, don't, and they don't put the two things together, you know. The, yeah. And they just abuse, continue to abuse it, and it yeah. costing us a lot of money and aggravation. Yeah. That's too bad. I'm glad that they figured that out. Yes, yeah. they did. So we're in good shape on that. Well, as far as that, I'm pretty sad. We'll have to obviously get going on budget season here. I'm a little concerned about my budget. It's a little bit high for this same time, I think, in past years. But, um, well, I mean, that'll be offset by some of the grants and whatnot. But, uh, it's a little like chloride and things like that are going to be over to pick up. It's not your hours. Uh, your hours are under. Yeah, no, our hours are good. That's been working out really well, actually. I think it's worked out great to have stuff on hours. It's kept the hour, the overtime down. Yeah. So we all had a little bit this last uh, pay period, you know, just with the workload with people on vacation. And 
whatnot, trying to get stuff finished up for that uh, Lynch Hill meeting and whatnot. But it's, it's been a productive I want to say summer. that's the first time you've had overtime this summer, though. I think so, pretty much. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep that up and uh, try to break even work with us. Park it, it won't break. Well, John, thank you for taking the time to come down right. tonight. We uh, sorry to hear about your loss. Yeah. Tough stuff. Um, so what we've done tonight, John, just to give you kind of a recap of some of the obvious stuff. Eric Kitchu uh, came in. There was a nice report on the Niagara uh, Recreation District. Uh, I think Katrina took good notes, so uh, I'll yeah. go over that stuff for you. The list of work. So one of the things that you'll see in the packet over there is the quote. You should see the quotes for the list of work. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also, did he get a copy? Yeah, of, I was okay. that. Here's a copy of what the salary is, what we've been paying the average in the last uh, eight years here. Okay. This right here, this figure included this year, which um, was a little unusual, was unusual because of the maps. So this is without all the map work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this twenty six hundred, that's the difference of um, Network's old contract and what their new contract would be. So, okay. So this ten thousand, whatever it is here, yeah. their old contract and uh, Katrina's going to get a copy of it is around eighty one hundred. Okay, Got so it. that's the difference there, and so they were looking for an additional twenty six hundred dollars to do, if you will, this amount of work here that's being done. So we have the potential savings there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the things that we've talked about is that, you know they wanted to, to have the little blisters as that face in the town for someone to talk to and, and, and to take the calls. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we, we didn't take any actions at all. We just basically got the information. We'll wait for a little bit more from Katrina, okay. and then we'll mm -hmm. get in, into a little bit more. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, the Pony Farm retaining wall, we just finished up. Martin looking into um, guardrail for us on that. Okay. Uh, Katrina put a nice town hall chair and table rental agreement, which I think is cool. going to pile as well. Yeah. We accepted that. And then you heard Martin. So that's, that's been the meeting so far. Okay. Um, I think about the only thing that we have to do is we can look at uh, the invoices here in public um, arena and then we'll go into a, uh, executive session to discuss the uh, town administrator replacement business. That's okay. It. Um, and uh, of course, it was his other business. Yes, um, John and I had one piece of new business from the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. And um, the very short version is that we have a lot of money sitting in an extremely low yield account waiting for select board action. We're getting something like 0.05% uh, or something like that. So we can fix that very easily. Sherilyn was nice enough to look at what's available out there. Um, a reasonable uh, sample of what's available. Uh, this would have to be split up because we'd be looking for FDIC insurance. Mm -hmm. But uh, an example would be North Shore has a 12 month no penalty CD where you can pull the funds out at any time if it has 1.25%. And also any Anything that we can identify as a no-brainer as sitting around for nine months, that's been 2%. So interest rates are at a point where now it's a significant difference between a plan savings account and taking yeah. a, a better deal. So what John and I wanted to ask is um, for the select board to give permission to the finance committee to um, we're meeting again tomorrow to do something better than something with no risk that is appreciably better than the savings account we have now. Does 
So as long as there's no risk, I don't see any. Yeah. How much money are we talking about? Um, that depends on the cash flow, what shareholders is available. But approximately, I mean, but the bottom line is that just for regular savings in our general fund, uh, one and a quarter percent is what Northfield Savings Bank is paying on the savings. Account. You know, As opposed to the point five we're getting right now. Yeah, exactly. Point zero. Point zero. Point zero. Point zero. Point zero. Point zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, all you have to do is ask. Yeah. You have to ask. Yeah. And community bank actually came in. Yeah, I mean their CD rates, like ninety days CD is point seven six percent. I mean that's ridiculous. Yeah. So I mean. But, and that's real money that you're talking about million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 So if you can come up with a, a motion, John, or, or Jason. John's probably better at this than I. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I guess I, I, would, I would make the motion to um, move 500000 into the 9-month CD that's paying 2%. And um, the rest of it into the savings account, um, or maybe I even was more. I was thinking of leaving that to the finance committee tomorrow. I was going to say maybe not. Don't pin tomorrow. Well, no, so. because the finance committee can't can't make that decision. Because that has to be the select. Okay, so we cannot um, allow the finance. Can we do a motion to allow the finance committee to make that decision? Based on certain parameters. Well, what, what I'm concerned about is, is at this point we don't know the free cash flow and we need to have Cheryl involved in saying how much. Oh, right. Or, or, or if you want to do what's up to, two, we could do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would feel more comfortable that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So move yeah, up to 500,000? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we also, I mean, we also have you know, the, the balance of it. There's no reason why. You make it up to a million. Yeah, we could make it up, up to a million, I guess. Or we could at least get it into savings at the one and a quarter percent. Well, I think that's where, mm -hmm. in that motion, where you would allow yourself that flexibility. Okay. Up to a million dollars mm -hmm. with the, the um, Oh. Are you generally you're moving from one bank to the other? Well, that's the first thing that we have to do. Yeah. Right. You're going from community to that's the correct. savings. Bank. That is correct. Well, can we go entirely to one bank, or do we have FDIC we, limits to consumer you're, you're, services? You're right. We would have to. We would have to split it up. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe it's a. I think it's two. Is it two hundred thousand? What did Sherilyn say? Like it might even it might even be as as much as five hundred. But there are other tricks too because you've got if you have different different accounts, sometimes you know Charlie would know. Right, right, right. right. And Woodfield could help us, but the the point of the motion would be that we would keep it FDIC insured, which I think keeps it out of the money market account. That's I like that language, like keeping it FDIC insured. Right, right. right. <laughs> okay. So you want to say that all the time? But I mean, I, 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 actually, I should back up because I think the first motion is to move our money to North Hill Savings Bank. Mm -hmm. Okay? I mean, we can set up different accounts within North Hill Savings Bank. I, okay. I think, I think we want to move it to other FDIC insured accounts. Right. And that may be Northfield Savings Bank or several banks. Right. Okay. So I guess. So, so I guess. Isn't it I, all in Community Bank now? It's all in Community Bank, right? So I can't move it all to one other bank. I don't. I don't see any reason why you can't. It, it, it because it's. My understanding is that the FDIC insurance has to do with the accounts themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think all the accounts can be within the same bank. 
So how does it work now? We have one general fund account with a lot at, at community. That doesn't. Yeah, that's that's, that, that's it. Are you yeah, there's one? There's 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 a one account for the savings uh, savings reserve and everything else. I mean, they're they're like sub accounts, but I mean, it's still just one account with community. Then we are not fully FDIC insured right now, as well as getting 005 percent. No, I I'm, I believe we are. We believe I believe we are. We are. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that I, mm -hmm. I I know we are. I'm mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> Okay. It's like seven sub accounts. Right. Yeah. But many of them don't have much money in them. Yeah. Um, okay, so. So that. So, I mean, then maybe my motion then would actually would be that we move the money out of Community Bank mm -hmm. um, into Northfield Savings Bank and or or and any other banks that that are going to give us better rates. As simple as that. Yeah, yeah. And the F and and FDIC approved. Yeah, yes. yeah, as long as everything is FDIC That's it. I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor, vote aye. 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 Any other vote? And move, instead of saying move money, you mean move town funds? Yeah. You want to just put it in general like that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that sounds like you guys are already doing a good job. If you've already <laughs> gained us at least a point, and maybe more. <laughs> <laughs> um, very good. Anything else, Jason, on that? No. Nope. All right. So let's okay. go. Uh, uh, no, okay. I just wanted to make sure um, Callie probably filled, filled everybody in on the on the little trail yeah. and. Was Cheryl here earlier? No, she's not here this week. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so, um, oh, I didn't realize that. Um, anyway, um, so, did you fill them in on the stormwater master plan? I have not, because I wasn't at the last meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, then, I mean, I, I didn't bring that stuff because I thought Cheryl was fine. I can um, just send out an email if you want. Yeah, yeah, that would be okay. fine. I mean, we identified, we identified the, the five most important projects, and they're all right, right here. You know, I mean, basically, um, you know, the, the, the storm drains, um, the, um, uh, the town hall, um, uh, doing doing some more work there um, to keep the water out of the basement. Whatever has to be done there, um, and um, the parking lot here. So pretty much, it's, it's all those things right in the village. But the most important, <coughs> um, and um, yeah. So that's that, and then the, wait, the financial committee, and then. Um, it's today's meeting. Ah, oh, yes. <clears throat> so, today's meeting uh, with uh, Waterbury Ambulance. Um, what they are asked of Moortown. Um, is a per capita charge of $19. We're paying, I believe, $36.20 to Montpelier now. Um, so what we're talking about, and the, the chair of Duxbury Select Board was there as well, and um, they also don't pay Waterbury anything. And their, their assessment is, let's see, uh, 1,325 is their population. We're not sure in Moortown. They think it's around 300 that are served by Waterbury Ambulance now. Mm -hmm. And so uh, <clears throat> the thinking was that if we can expand the Waterbury Ambulance 
area, oh. we could save money mm -hmm. over what we're paying Montpelier, mm -hmm. and maybe even break even. But even even at nineteen dollars for three hundred people, I think it, yeah, I think it makes sense. Okay. So so I guess you know we have to talk with uh, Cheryl more to see if we can nail down you know what and what the numbers are mm -hmm. in more time. And we're currently being used at 32 for that? Yeah, uh, 36. Uh, Mark Podgewaite, who's the executive director, thought it was $36.20. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Is there any sort of analysis of response time to different parts of Moortown from Montpelier and Waterbury? So. Um, no, but I mean, that certainly mm -hmm. would. <clears throat> We would have to take that into consideration. So, <clears throat> so how how do you proceed on that? Um, well, basically, today's meeting was just to you know get the numbers out there, and then uh, it, going back and, and figuring out our budget, pretty much. So I think we kind of have to to work on that, and I I, I would say just be talking more with them. Uh, on issues like response time and so on. <clears throat> initiate some maybe conversation with Waterbury. I mean, um, Montpelier as well. We're going to start mm -hmm. subtracting from that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Do we have any sort of service level agreement with Montpelier now? Uh, I think, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We, pay, we pay them. Yeah, but uh, does that have the numbers money. for expected response time and the like? Or is not that detailed? I. Yeah, I don't know. No. <coughs> we did it one time. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. okay. Kept it. We, okay. haven't, we haven't looked at that in several years. It's been a while since yeah. it's been looked at, but it has been looked at. Okay. So they're talking about, sorry, taking over <coughs> what Popular is doing? No, 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 no not, not at all. Okay. What they want to do is they want, the, they want to charge us, number one, they want to charge us for who their service is. So they're already doing it. Yeah. They okay. already are. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and, and then the discussion continued that if yeah, their yeah. service area became larger, we would yeah. 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 I mean, they're running, they're running at a deficit right now. So, I mean, um, <clears throat> so the whole idea is, is that $19 per capita between Duxbury and us would make up for that deficit. They're, they're, in the hole at fifty four thousand seven hundred mm -hmm. for this year's budget. So <clears throat> and that doesn't include dispatch services yeah. either. So I mean <clears throat> and that's is that meant mostly Gallagher acres? Yeah, it yeah. would be in Cobb Cobb Hill. Yeah. 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 But I mean the new as it's getting bigger a lot of it's Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's probably one reason why they don't have, you know, an, an established number. Mm -hmm. Can you take out the agreement with Montana? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think it'd be good to review that. Maybe the next meeting, sure. training, you yeah, could put 15 minutes so that we can review that. Yep. I'm just going to put them both together so we can kind of figure that out. Yeah. That's the job plan. Good. Anything else, John? I don't know. I guess that's it. Keep it busy. All right, so we have a few things to sign. And this, uh, so you guys know I'm signing the uh, pen, um, commission agreement, giving us the additional $5,000 mm -hmm. to come to that Lynch Hill. I don't know if you realize we got that. Oh, right, yes. So That's another fun. additional. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Jason, we would take a look at this. Yeah, that one's all by himself. Yeah. Brothers.
This looks like um, a certificate of project completion for the uh, Vermont municipal bond for the town at large. Looks like it needs a real signature. Mm -hmm. This list just reminded me of something. Um, someone, I don't know if it was our road crew or a contractor, did <coughs> mowing of the ditches. They did a really wonderful job. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to comment kind of on that. I, I saw an item here for um, how Fairfield was roadside mower rental. I don't know if that's with an operator or not, so I don't know. We ran first, one week yeah. with, a, mm -hmm. with a driver. Mm -hmm. so the first pass was the driver, the second pass was the road crew. Okay. okay. Two okay. different types of mowers. But very well done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Seamers were approved. Uh, that's where I noticed it. They did a good job. Look. Yeah, my own mother looks great too. He doesn't have time. Oh. We rescheduled seven times and then he said he just doesn't have time. Later than where it is for the. Yeah, it's there. Right. Mm -hmm. Happens so quick, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah.